Hey, what's up everyone? Tim here from Everyday Tactical Viz. Today we're looking at this, which is the Adventure Mate version two. So this is basically an outdoor combination multi-tool. We have a shovel, we got a hammer, we got an ax, we've got a saw, and we've also got a, well, I guess what they're calling a puller. You got the hook that's on the end there, which we'll show you in one second. So we'll talk through the details. I'm gonna roll in footage throughout this video to show you what it looks like in use. For those who might be interested, here's the box. Let's start off and talk about kind of your sheath system here. First thing I want to show you actually is on the back, you got hook and loop so that you can attach it to a pack or you can put it on a belt if you want to do that. It does open up totally. There's no run through um, that's wide enough for probably your average belt. I don't know if you can see this, but like, there's a little loop there, but it'd be pretty small for a belt. Um, that being said, you can you know attach it to a pack that's got um, wider molly because those are pretty wide but you certainly could attach it to a belt or something else um, with those hook and loop straps. So on the front, you can see Adventure Mate um, there. It's got this kind of magnetic locking system. So you pull on this and it releases it and you can hear it when I bring it back down in, clicks into place. And that, um, when it clicks into place, that keeps this from pulling up, but you can pull it out very easily. You do have a couple loops there. Again, they're quite small, the loops on the top, but you could attach it if you ran some paracord through there. So open this up and you're gonna see the rest of the system. So in the back here, we've got the shovel and we've got a sheath for the um, a sheath for the ax or the hatchet. And then we actually have a mask underneath here for the, um, the hatchet as well. So let me take this out to show you what it looks like. So I'll unsnap that and then this is Velcro. Pull that up and then we'll take out the ax right here. Now, unfortunately, when I was using it before, I had this on and I busted this thing. Now that was absolutely operator error, but I will say the leather is very thin. So just be aware of that. If you buy one of these, you may want to upgrade and build your own leather system. So um, take the mask off here to show you what this looks like. So there's a look at your ax, or maybe some people might call it a hatchet. I'd call it an ax. Um, show you the profile. Definitely going to be for be effective for splitting, right? It's not just going to be a very thin profile ax. Um, this is going to transform into the other tools, which we'll show you in a minute. So chopping with this thing works well. Um, you got, you got a rubberized handle here. It's got a little bit of a hook so you can lock in. You do have a lanyard there. It is hollow. You'll see, um, kind of how the pieces of the puzzle fit together in a moment. Um, but it is very solid as far as a chopping tool. I will tell you that when I got it, it was pretty much dull. So you do want to sharpen it up, obviously, to make sure that it's uh, ready to be used as an ax. Um, but because of how the uh, the profile of the blade, it is going to hit into that wood and then, you know, bust it apart nicely. Definitely got some heft to it as the wind kicks up here in New Hampshire. Um, definitely got some heft to it. Um, but yeah, that worked well. Um, you got the, uh, the pommel here. Um, there's an official term. I'm going to roll it in the bottom here. I forget what it's called, but um, the backside of the head of an ax. Um, so you can drive stakes with that. You know, it's not for me, like you can saw through something and then you want to snap it off. You can use this to like, boom, hit it and snap it off. Lots of different uses for, um, a hammer type tool out in the woods. You can see AMV2 there. Um, this is the hook. Uh, my buddy Ben from over at Living Survival who also reviewed this and I'll put a link to his video down in the description and also at the end of this video, if you want to see what he has to say. He noted you could use that hook to like, uh, you know, hook onto a bale of a, uh, like a pot or something if you're cooking over a stove. Certainly you could use it for that. I, I don't see a ton of use for this thing. Um, some people talk about it as like a, uh, a steak remover, uh, like a tent steak remover. Um, it's, it's fine that it's there. It's, I don't think it's going to be in the way necessarily, but it is an additional little piece. For me, there's not a lot of functionality, functionality to that. Definitely as a chopping tool, the ax and to use this as a hammering tool or a smashing tool, that's gonna be helpful. So that's a quick look at you know the tool as far as the, the chopping, the hammering, and the, uh, the hook there. You see this little paddle here. So you're gonna pull up on this. Let me see if I can do it, yeah. Loosen it up, pull it up. All right, so you can see that flap is pulled up and it reveals this little button. So you press down on the button and then you're going to remove the, he the head and that's where your saw is. Now, I will say, as you use the ax, as you use it more and more, um, this kind of like jams into place. So you're gonna probably have to finagle a little bit. Um, the paddle does seem to lock in, so you're gonna have to really work to pry that up. 
Um, I noticed even when I got the paddle up and I was pressing the button, I did have to kind of wiggle it a bit to get it to finally loosen up. Once you take the, um, take the ax head out with the saw here, you're basically gonna turn it around, slide it in like this, and you can see it's gonna lock in. Let's see if I can do that. Like so. And you can hear that little click. Fold this down, and now you've got the saw. Now, when you're using the saw, you definitely wanna put the mask on the, um, on the uh, ax so you're not hurting yourself. You do have a nice long handle there, so you can grab all the way back here if you need to reach up to saw something like up in a tree. I will say that your length of pull is pretty limited here with the actual saw blade. It, they are some nice, uh, nice teeth there. Um, it's a good cutting tool. They do give you an additional saw blade and the tools to replace it, but it's not super long. So even your basic like Baco Laplander is gonna be bigger than that. But again, it's built into one. So it's kind of a system all in one. Um, I will tell you that when I was sawing with it, I tended to choke up to cut. Now, one thing you'll find with a saw is your length of pull is gonna have a huge impact on the um, efficiency of your cutting, depending on what you're cutting, right? If you're cutting little pieces of wood to make more firewood, boom, done. If you're cutting bigger pieces of wood to make a bench, to make a bed, something like that, you wanna have more length of pull. Um, one of my first survival trips I ever took that I shot a video of, I had a Baco Laplander and I made a raised bed, right? So I put a bunch of Y sticks, a bunch of supports, and then had to cut pieces of wood about this wide, you know, that were about this, uh, this diameter. And so the Baco Laplander worked great for me for that. I think this would work well. Um, but again, if you're gonna do a ton of cutting, um, length of pull is gonna be important to consider. And then also you wanna consider um, you know, the ease of use. It is a little bit clumsy, even with the mask on here, to have to, you know, saw like this. And it's a lot of weight in the middle here, as opposed to it being more balanced. So heads up on that. Let me pop this up here again. Keep the blade away from my face. Press the button down, and I'm gonna try to pull this. All right, so there's kind of your separated head of the ax and the saw, and then there's your handle. Now I'm gonna attach the shovel and show you that. All right, next up here we have the shovel. So there's the shovel head, and it attaches in the same way. You're basically gonna slide it in, and it's gonna lock in with that little kind of button there. Fold this down, and now it's locked into place. Now it is interesting, you can see the, some of the wear there, but because everything's frozen in New Hampshire, it's not, a lot of the stuff isn't sticking to the shovel. You can see the tip a little bit beat up there. Um, First thing, as soon as I saw the head of the shovel, I thought that's definitely wider than some of the other, you know, um, entrenching tools that you have out there. It reminds me of the Cold Steel Spetsnaz shovel, but definitely, definitely bigger. Um, when I hold this, especially with this little hook, my first thought was, man, you could use that thing to chop just like you could use, uh, I think about Fowler and his uh, Spetsnaz shovel and how he used it on a loan. So you could definitely use it as a chopping tool. It's not, it doesn't come sharpened. Um, like the cold steel one does, but you could definitely, you could definitely chop with it. Um, functions great as a shovel. I mean, it does, it does the job. A shovel is one of those tools for me that some people really like in the outdoors, but, um, I just find I don't use it a ton. I know some people like to dig a trench for their fire. Awesome. Um, I think about Corporal's Corner. He definitely utilizes a shovel because he'll dig all kinds of th stuff and make these awesome shelters. So yeah, he, you know, he's the kind of guy who would use it on a regular basis. For me, a shovel is definitely not something I'm using a ton out in the outdoors. But when I think about this tool, I think about keeping it in my, uh, in my car. And now if I get stuck in the mud, I get stuck in some ice some snow, I could use this to, uh, to dig out of it. It does have the little lip there on both sides. So you can, you know, put your foot on that to, uh, to drive in. Um, the handle's comfortable, despite the fact that it doesn't come basically to like an even end. It's, you know, got a little bump out here as opposed to it being uh, even on both sides, but no big deal on that. Um, again, for me, when it comes to like an outdoor tool, this is not the type of thing I take out into a bushcrafting um, adventure that I'm gonna have as far as a shovel, because I just don't use a shovel a lot. If you do, then as, a, as far as a shovel, functions pretty well. Um, does the job and again you got those other tools as well all right so here are some thoughts first off your weight is going to be about five pounds total so that's pretty hefty for the whole system um, so you got to keep that in consideration when you think about taking it out into the woods in a pack or on your belt like that um, price point 
as it comes in right now, 285, but they're offering 20% off. So 28 times two, let's round that to 30. You're gonna save around 60 bucks um, to purchase this. So um, compare that to getting like a cold steel Spetsnaz shovel, a basic Schrade hatchet or ax, you know, small ax, and the Baco Laplander, and you're gonna spend less than 100 bucks. So price point, this is definitely gonna run you significantly more, even with the discount, compared to getting those three individual tools. Now, somebody might say, yeah, I'll, I don't need the shovel, so I'm just gonna get the two tools. Totally get it. Now, if you upgrade to a higher end version, like um, you get a bigger silky saw, and let's say you spend 70 bucks on that, you get a Grants vs. Brooks, Brooks um, like hatchet, ax, something like that, you're gonna spend over 100 bucks there. Now you're seeing the prices start to compare. At a basic level, you could definitely save more money getting the Cold Steel Spetsnaz, a Baco Laplander, or a similar type of um, saw from them, and a basic uh, hatchet or ax. So price point, that's a cheaper way to go. If you go higher end, then you're getting closer to the price of this. That being said, if you're gonna spend that much money and get those individual tools, you're getting some like a really nice silky, a really nice Grantsford Brooks, Brooks, and then um, you know your I guess your cold steel is probably the the most basic out there, but there's probably some even more expensive, nicer ones. Um, the real advantage to this one is the three or the I guess the five in one. I'm really thinking three with the shovel, the axe, and the saw. But the three in one kind of setup versus individual tools. Weight wise, I think it's gonna be uh, generally less weight to carry those tools individually with those those budget ones than to carry this, but it's probably pretty similar. Um, this to me is a car tool. Uh, this is the type of tool that I'll keep out in a car, um, you know, so that I have a bunch of those tools that I'm not gonna use all the time, but I'm out with some friends and we're gonna, oh yeah, let's do a campfire. Oh man, I don't have an ax, I don't have a saw. Oh, don't worry, I got one in the back of my car. That's the type of, uh, of way I would use this, uh, use this tool. Again, I think the biggest win of this thing is definitely the shovel. I just, I just holding it like this, I feel like I could do some chopping to do some basic wood prep or something. Definitely do the digging. You could, you know, move coals from a fire with this type of thing. But um, I think the bottom line for any kind of like multi-use tool like this is that um, individual items are going to function better than any multi-tool across the board. I love Leatherman. They make some great products but a, a solid set of pliers is gonna function better, that something that's a dedicated set of pliers is gonna function better than pliers from a multi-tool. A dedicated knife is gonna function better than a knife on a multi-tool, Victorinox, Leatherman, whatever it is. So you're gonna lose some of the high-end high end functionality when you go to the multi-tool option. The win is that it's all combined, all combined into one tool. Price point for this, pretty significant, um, but if you want something that's one tool that you could keeping your car, then I would go with this. I don't see myself using this um, out in the woods just because mostly of the weight, five pounds for this type of stuff, and I don't need, um, I just don't need all the extra weight. The thing is, um, like a, the wood handle and the shovel on the Cold Steel Spetsnaz is, there's some weight there, obviously. Baco Laplander, pretty lightweight, and a little like Schrade hatchet, got some weight to it but lighter overall um, this because it's made of high quality materials you got some hefty metal there it's just just actually adding a lot of extra weight let me say something that it really stood out to me is the locking mechanism this thing is solid it's never loosened up on me that little button that clicks into place man these things lock in really nicely um, I've used other saws and things like that where you can swap out blades they loosen up they snap it's just they're not well made often the locking system on this thing is really, really solid. So I'm, I've been impressed with that. Um, so well done on the engineering for that, guys. Again, for me, a shovel is not an outdoor tool that I would bring very often, but a car tool, definitely. Um, ben over at Living Survival noted that he's tested some of those survival shovels out that have a saw and a you know little knife and a fire steel and said in general they're junk. I, I generally agree with that. I've seen ones that are better and worse. Um, my preference is to have a something that's got a longer handle, um, but even the one that I got more recently that does have a longer handle, um, it, I'm just not sure it's gonna function long-term great because there's a lot of pieces you gotta click together, whereas this thing, I think the overall construction is very solid. So I think bottom line for this, if you're looking for something to keep in your car for emergencies, you can use these tools and you're willing to invest the money seems like a solidly made product. If you want to go on the budget end of things, 
you know, Baco Laplander, Cold Steel Spetsnaz, and a basic, you know, hatchet, not just from Schrade, but like a Fiskars one could be great as well. Um, you can save some money on that. And with that said, let me hear your thoughts on this guy as the sun's going down here in New Hampshire. What do you like about it? What would you change? Is it cool enough that you'd buy it? Is it something that you'd keep in your car? Tell me if you use a shovel a lot in the outdoors because I feel like some people do, but that's, that's just not my jam. So I'd love to hear your thoughts and your feedback on that as well. And uh, let's get that conversation started in the comment section now. All right, guys, thanks as always for checking out the videos here on YouTube. Please subscribe to Everyday Tactical Vids if you haven't done so already. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Check us out on Instagram, Tumblr, and Vero as well. More videos coming soon. Take care.